cropping an Affinity Photo is achieved by using the Crop tool, which can be found on the Tools panel to the left. I'll show you some of its different behaviours and use cases. One of the main applications for cropping is to tighten up and improve the composition. For this image, I'll select the Crop tool using C on the keyboard. Then I'll click drag on the four corner handles of the crop boundary to bring the overall crop window in. Once I'm happy with the composition, I can apply the crop either by clicking on Apply up here or by using Return or Enter on the keyboard. Cropping will reduce the overall resolution of the document, as we can see here on the context toolbar. However, do note that cropping an Affinity Photo is non destructive. The areas outside of the current crop have not been discarded. To demonstrate this, I'll select the Crop tool again using C, and on the Context toolbar, I'll check Reveal. This will now show me areas of the document or image that are currently hidden because of the crop. I can disable Darken to see these areas more clearly. I might decide that the current crop is too tight, so I can drag on the crop handles to expand the crop window slightly. I'll also re-enable Darken, so I can focus more on the current crop composition, then commit the crop once again. If you have photographs with crooked horizon lines, the crop tool is also how you would straighten these. Here is a fairly typical example where this shot was taken handheld from a moving vehicle. I'll select the crop tool again, and on the context toolbar, we will see this option called straighten. I could click this to switch to straighten mode, but I can also engage this mode by holding Command on Mac, Control on Windows. Then, with the modifier key still held down, I can click drag to draw a line following the crooked horizon. When I release the mouse button, the document will be rotated and the crop boundary will automatically shrink to the opaque areas. I can also disable reveal to hide the extreme edges, and I'll then commit the crop. You can also crop to an active raster selection. On this image, for example, I might select the rectangular marquee tool, then click drag to create a focused selection of the main nebula detail. Now, if I select the crop tool with the selection active, the crop boundary will automatically snap to the selection. I can quickly commit the crop, then use Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows to deselect. This method also works for non rectangular selections. For example, here I'll select the elliptical marquee tool, then create an elliptical selection of the tire, holding Shift to constrain it proportionally. If I need to reposition this, I can click drag inside the selection area to move it. Then when I switch to the crop tool, it will now infer a rectangular crop boundary based off the selection, and I can commit the crop, then once again, deselect. Now I'll go through some of the additional options on the context toolbar. The cog icon gives you access to some useful cropping presets categorized by type. Clicking on a preset will instantly apply it. Crop settings can be reset at any time, either by clicking Reset here, or by using the Escape key. The Mode dropdown has several options. The default is unconstrained. This simply lets you drag any of the handles to change the crop window. Whilst dragging one of the handles, you can hold Shift, and this will constrain the current aspect ratio. The original ratio mode will allow you to transform the crop window whilst maintaining the image's original aspect ratio. Custom ratio allows you to enter a specific aspect ratio and constrain the crop to it. For example, I can enter 16 into the width field and 9 into the height field, and this will constrain the crop to a typical widescreen ratio. It's also a good idea to enable snapping, as this will help you snap the crop window to the edges of the document if required. 
the resample mode can be used to quickly resize and resample images, which is especially useful when dealing with physical measurements. My document here is using pixels as its measurement unit, but if I needed to crop and resample this image to a specific print size in inches, I can do this with one procedure by changing the unit's drop down to inches and increasing the DPI value to something suitable for print resolution. 300, for example. I can then set an appropriate width and height in inches, such as 7 by 5, and modify the crop window until I achieve the composition I am after. The crop readout up here will tell me the appropriate pixel resolution for a 7 by 5 inch measurement at 300 dpi. This is the resolution the document will be resampled to when I commit the crop. And indeed, when I click Apply, the document resolution will change, as well as the measurement unit. Now, for example, I could send this image straight to print, confident in the knowledge that it will match the correct requirements for printing to 7 by 5 inch photo paper at 300 dpi. Finally, I'll cover the overlay option. And because the crop tool remembers the previous settings, I'll use Escape to return it to its default unconstrained mode. The overlay option lets you choose which type of cropping guide or overlay to display in order to help guide the composition. It defaults to a rule of thirds grid, which is a fairly common technique. But I could choose another overlay, such as golden spiral, diagonals, phi grid, or I could choose to disable the overlay entirely. I can also cycle through these options quickly by pressing O on the keyboard. For this image, I'll use the golden spiral overlay to help me achieve a pleasing composition. I can use Shift and O to change the orientation of the spiral if required. For this image, however, it is fine with its default top left position. The idea with the golden spiral is that you position the main focal point or subject within the smallest circle, and then ideally the spiral should gradually flow to meet or incorporate other areas of the image. It works very well with this image, so I'll commit this crop. With this next image, I'll select the crop tool, and this time, I might use the diagonals overlay to help me position the bird in the center of the crop. The background is quite busy, so I'm going to use a tight crop. I can use the diagonal overlays to see what will be positioned in the middle of the final cropped image. If I need to reposition the crop window, I can do this just by click dragging anywhere inside the window. If I'm not sure about using diagonals, I can always try the Phi grid. This segments the crop window into rectangles based on the golden ratio. And here, I can make sure that the bird's more prominent eye is contained within the top middle rectangle, with one of the lines intersecting the beak. This looks like a strong composition, so I'll apply the crop. But of course, don't forget that you can always go back to the crop tool and enable reveal on the context toolbar if you decide you want to change the crop at a later date. And that was a video on using the cropping functionality in Affinity Photo. I hope you found it useful, and thank you for watching.